Hey everybody, welcome to the next commentary. Today we're playing AP Cog on mid versus either Wukong or Galio. I don't know if they're lane swapping or not. Um, but we're playing a normal game. Looks like most of the enemy team is gold and platinum elo. I'm like seven Cogma games in. And uh, it's been hard. Uh, for high elo that is. I tried a bunch of challenger games. I won some, but they were extremely boring. And then I've also lost some. But also I've won ones where the opponent DCs. I'm not going to upload a game where somebody DCs, so I've just been really unlucky. And then, not to mention, uh, sometimes you get auto-filled bot lane, and then the video... I'm not trying to make bot lane videos, so that makes it a bit harder as well. So, I went to normals because I can guarantee my role mid lane, so it's a bit easier to make sure that I am not auto-filled. Getting auto-filled when trying to make a video is annoying because mid lane is the most popular role, so it happens all the time. Alright, we are versus Galio, and... Our jungler has DC'd. But that's okay. Makes for a better video, right? Jungler isn't even here and we can still win. So, Kog'Maw early on as AP Kog'Maw is actually AD Kog'Maw. So, what we're going to be doing is actually looking for early game W Harass. You start with W and you just auto attack the person as if you're an AD carry. And it will actually hit really, really, really hard. So, I'm going to let this guy step up for these creeps here. And then I'll go aggressive if he decides to do that. So, right here... We'll get a couple of auto attacks on him. If he continues to come back, we'll even get a, a couple more. And we'll back away. I'm going to put down my ward, otherwise I can do that other auto attack there because I lost vision. And you can see that he's uncomfortable because if he wants to step back through, he has to put himself in danger. Barely hit him with that. And it's slowing him right now, by the way. So I'm going to go back to auto attacking. I have phase rush. I'll show my runes soon. And just DPSing with autos. A lot of people don't realize how much damage you deal with just auto-attacking people down. Now, I did take a lot of, uh, e not EXP, I took a lot of damage from the creeps there, so one problem could be a Nidalee ganking me because I am, like, playing really, really aggressive. So, we do have to be careful about that. Okay, she's actually balling. And she has double buffs. But this guy's really low. She's probably gonna come mid next. But there is a chance that I can outplay if I flash this guy's ability. Two auto attacks on him should deal some pretty big damage. He is definitely still bot side. Jungler. Go, go, go. We can definitely do this, actually. Get the blast going first. And now we can uh, chase her down. I'll just pop ghost so it's easier. Oh! <gasps> My. Ew. I don't think we catch that guy. We tried. Alright, time to head back. I wanted double buff so bad. Uh, she was really deep, so it's really easy to just go straight behind her and then pop the only escape path that she has, which is the um, Blast Cone. And then we have Ghost. Ghost is really valuable for running people down. Um, and that's why I take it on Kog'Maw. Not only that, but it also keeps you safe in lane. So if I ever got ganked by Nidalee, I, you want to pop Ghost early. Just immediately pop it and start running away from people. Uh, this guy definitely based. So in the meantime, these are the runes that I'm taking this game. You're basically, you can take, uh, Comet or Aerie, whatever you want. If you want early game damage, I take Phase Rush because I just think it's very valuable during the late game because you can hit three abilities on people and then run them down with your ultimate. So I really like that. And you have to take Precision Tree for Presence of Mind because you have an ultimate that costs more mana every single time you cast it, similar to Cassidin, but you don't get benefit from it. So every single time you cast it, it's the same exact ability, but it just costs more. It's on a very low cooldown. So she should be topside now, most likely. Uh, okay, well, but I didn't look at the map. I was just going to say she's topside because she did all of the bot side camps, so there's no reason for her to actually be anywhere else besides topside. Hit him. Unfortunately, I'm unable to assist with this. Oh! Yes, she actually stepped back up. Now, can I put this goop down and I just run? Flash on me? Well, no, he already used Flash. Okay. He used Flash over the wall. I'm glad that she kept on running down because if she ran away from this 
This way, I actually would have not been able to get her, but she messed up with uh, her pathing there, and we were successful with getting the kill. Those are the smallest advantages that I'm talking about with, like, high elo versus low elo. That literal decision inside a challenger, I would never get a kill there, because the person will always rotate out the safe way, which is, I can't get back over the wall, so this is the safest path, but because we're playing inside of a lower elo, like, I think this person, I looked it up, was Platinum. Uh, she makes a tiny, tiny error, and that gives me a tiny lead. I knew Galio was going to flash over the wall, so I was preemptively uh, ready to flash over. I just really wanted to commit to see if I can grab a kill on her, because I know that she's flashless, and I, if I do Flash's ability, I think I can go for an outplay. Um, If there's a Blast Cone here, it's huge. Because she might be sitting in this brush. Uh, he is not. Oh, they are so gone. When I get one kill, I'm going to level up to six as well. And you're not honestly dealing that much damage to me. Wasn't able to get them all, but this guy's pretty low and staying underneath his tower. So there's an opportunity to maybe... Go for him and just sack my wave mid. Oh, I missed my E. I'm, I'm going to give up on the opportunity now. We could have dove with Pantheon, but I would have to ping that out. Because Pantheon could use uh, their ability to actually block tower shots to make the dive really easy. So I'm just going to head back mid. I got double buffs off of it. I still have Ghost available. I'll lose one plate. It looks like I didn't miss too many creeps, but... The reason why I was able to roam bot is because I had first push. So I just had free time to do whatever I want. Extend my lead to others. Is there more fighting going on? God, I keep on using my emote wheel because it's normally bound to my junglers on my other accounts, but it's not on this one. So I'm always trying to check my Pantheon uh, if he's fighting Nidalee or not, but I keep on making a mistake. You know what? I'll stay. Screw it. Also, Nidalee just walked by. I am killable. Let's just check if this is being done by Nidalee. It's not. What do I want to buy? What would be a perfect purchase? Oh, there's Nidalee. So how your ultimate works, if you're completely new to Kog'Maw, is that it deals bonus damage when they're below 40%. So what you want to do is you want to chunk them out with other abilities, and you can still use it uh, to chunk people. But you don't want to spam it because it costs so much mana. But, um, your other abilities deal decent damage. It's not crazy, but it deals enough to sometimes get them low enough that you can, uh... Like, right here, it should deal the bonus damage if I landed it. As you can see, I'm out of mana. Um, it's a Wukong top? Oh, shit, and that guy's really fed, too. Let's get out of here. He was rotating down. <clears throat> he was rotating down. <clears throat> the reason why we knew he was rotating down is because uh, he's not top, so where else would he be? Now, are you comfortable enough to just flash on me to kill me? Okay, I'll just leave. It's whatever. Enjoy the tower plate. I'm out of here. I think I can afford Sorks and also... Oh, I don't have tier. Oh my gosh, I messed up, guys. Okay, you need tier on Kogma. For some reason, I thought that I already built it. I must have been panicking or something during one of my purchases or just not paying attention. But you need tier because you have mana issues. Um, so that is going to prevent the mana issues so you can spam your ultimate because that's kind of how the champion functions. Your E is to slow, your Q deals good damage, and then you use your ultimate to finish people off from really, really, really far away. Because as the game goes on, level 16, it's like three screens away. It's like here. So it's extremely far. I know that I just stood inside of his ability while explaining that, but whatever. Little tiny, tiny poke on the guy. He's rotating top. A little bit of poke damage again. As you can see, I'm just poking with my ability. Even though they... Okay, I'm okay here. We can actually just kill this person with just auto attacks. Oh, I'll flash with the E. 
I could have maybe popped Ghost instead. I wanted to get the last auto attack off so I don't need to use anything, but then they flash and also... Not many people take Nimbus Cloak. This person has Nimbus Cloak. I, I like never see people take that rune, but surprisingly they had it and they actually had to burn my sun because of that. Oh, they're just gone. I still have Ghost if she flashes on me. Hmm. This is so weird. This must be warded. She probably sees where I'm at. Okay. This guy's missing. You can go for Lyndries or Ludens or Crown. Whatever fits best. Um, I'm gonna probably go Lyandries because they do have like a tankier team comp with Galio and uh, Wukong and the percent damage from the passive is really effective. Galio roamed bot. Dragon's not being done. I'll just go for this. Wait for a little bit of health. Run back. Rift Herald is being done. It's on Wave Crash topside. Wukong could try to stop, but Galio used ultimate, right? So there's no way Galio can rotate. Galio with ultimate is kind of meh. Oh, yeah, they are rotating, so I'm just going to have to immediately come over. Here I go. Nidalee might be here as well. No, she's bought. Okay, so they're sacking. Okay, we can actually contest this. It Dragons hurt really, really fucking bad, so... She's trying to leave. Kind of weird flanking as Kogma, but here we are, man. Yep, you flashed. One more R should do it. And then I use my E because she jukes backwards. That's the thing about Kogma. It feels kind of awkward to use, but remember that when people... Yo, tank! Okay, we're okay. When people juke their uh, juke your abilities, you can use that as an opening to land your other ones easier. So even though she hard juked, it actually <clears throat> gave me a punishable moment. Okay, well, she is uh, really wanting to kill that guy. I have phase rush, right? So I can maybe chase. This is why phase rush is good. Boom, got that guy. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, okay, we'll go for this guy now. Make sure I don't get taunted, otherwise I just die. Stand on the Pantheon, so... He saves me right. He's dead. Okay. Jeez. That was close. Almost got uh, killed there. And we're level 11. So this is a big spike. For Kogma. his spike points are level 11, because look at the ultimate range now. It gained actually quite a bit. And then level 16 will be the next one. But, uh, Kogma, it's it's so funny because, like, I've explained this before to other people uh, that sometimes ask, but, like, so, is AP Kogma viable? And I say no. It's like, okay, so why would I ever play him? Well, when I'm saying no, I'm saying that you can't consistently play this champion and challenger and win with it, probably. But you could inside every single other elo. Even Grandmaster is uh, maybe not viable, but everything below completely is. So I could confidently play only AP Kogma and easily climb to Grandmaster playing it, is what I'm saying. Because you have a lot of uh, moments of outplay potential. So when you think of viability, it really depends on who you're asking and what you mean by viability of a champion. Kind of how I feel like Lux is also not viable in Challenger. Unless you like have a specific playstyle for her, but it, it's like, why would you ever play the champion over another, basically? We do a lot of damage now with the Landry's. Look how much damage our ultimate hits on this guy, and he's not even that chunked. 
and that last one did the bonus damage. So I'm just hitting him from super far away. The ultimate sniper champion, really. Especially when you're 16. So what we could do is two special things. Firstly, we can just go for normal build, which is uh, Archangel's next. You can also go for Rylai's. Rylai's is sick. Um, the reason why you go Rylai's on Kog'Ma is because you can slow people with your ultimate and then chase them all the way down, just pelting them with the Qs over and over. It's really funny and enjoyable to play, too. All right, let's head back bot. You see how they're like playing super aggressive again? So we just want to be part of the fight. He, if he jukes it, in hard jukes it, I'm actually putting it in a position where he will have to run back into me. Is this warded? Okay, I have to be careful because if Galio pinches me from this side, it's pretty bad. But I actually deal a lot too, as you can see. So I'll do a little bit poke. You do EQR just immediately and try to get them to that threshold where your R starts dealing bonus damage to them. I'm going to use a lot of mana here because I'm grabbing blue buff, so it'll regen me regardless. This little uh, icon going around your bar is also how you see when it's going to refresh the uh, cost. Also, you can see this here. Um, bring it back to it being inexpensive again. Don't want to get hit by a Nidley Spear. If you don't get hit by a Nid Spear, she's honestly useless. Uh, so, that's the gimmick. Every single champion, like, has a gimmick. Galio is, don't get hit by his E. And also try to stay out of the range of the E as well. Because if he never lands his W on you, you should be okay. It's very hard to land Galio's abilities. So that's his gimmick. Nidalee is obviously, uh, landing a Spear. Jin is landing a W and then following it up with everything. Kog'Maw is slowing them and then pelting with R. So that's my gimmick. Basically, every single champion has a gimmick, and if you understand what you need to do to counter it, it makes it really easy. Senna's gimmick is look for one ability into one auto attack to do the soul thing. Oh, she stopped the ultimate. That's actually big. I might be able to help here. Nilly might not die, but the thing is, I have Ghost, and that's going to actually make it so I can... Uh, get them here and ghost what's great about ghost is it speeds you up oh that guy must be so tilted that i didn't get that kill and it extends the duration every single time i get a takedown so see how long it lasts so i can really chase down galio there there was no opportunity for him to run away so he had to turn around and i was going to chase the rest but they actually died to my teammates so this wukong has not roamed down ever but he's he's actually quite fed so it's a little scary uh, whenever he does join, we need to be careful about that. I feel always safe as long as I have flash. If I have no flash, then that's the moment where I'm like probably going to be playing really far back and letting my teammates do the engaging, and then I just follow it up afterwards. Kind of a small thing as well. Your uh, Q does give phase rush here. Mm, I'll just kill her. That's okay. So she used Flash on me, so she can't escape. And Senna used Flash W to snare me, so I was just kind of stuck. There was no, I don't think, a Flash outplay unless I flashed her, uh, her Flash. So, couldn't do anything. That's okay, though. Now, this is the moment where you can decide. Do you want to go for the Rylai's build to slow people down and have an easier time hitting them? Or, you go Penetration. Pure Penetration with Shadow Flame and Void Staff, and then like a Death Cap maybe, or a uh, Rylai's. Because Kog'Maw's AP ratios are honestly kind of meh. It's more so the base damage of the d uh, abilities are actually kind of high. And then you can decide on, um, I'll do the Rylai's to show you guys what I mean about kiting. Um, <clears throat> but when you just build a bunch of pen, it just makes it so all of your base damage hits really hard. Another small thing, once again, there's all these things like, as you see, it gives you passive attack speed, but also when you hit Q on somebody, it shreds armor and magic resist. So you actually can use this on a tank and it helps out your entire team. A little bit of poke damage on that guy, as you can see. The thing is Kog'Maw has such short cooldowns that it's so easy to just like... 
Okay, I did just use my ultimate again. I'm going to wait for this to time out before using my next one. I just shoved out mid wave. This should be a pretty easy fight. Wukong has no TP and he's top and he's the most fed member. So if they do fight us, I'm pretty confident that I'll carry it. So I don't really mind them coming in. Plus, like, Senna has no uh, flash too. Oh, really nice hit by uh, our Seraphine here. And then we're going to do a little bit of chasing. Uh, Senna's going to die to my ultimate here. And then that gives me presence of mind, so I have more mana again. Just got a huge mana chunk. We just need to find him here. Yeah, continue juking me. And if you continue juking me, I'm going to catch you. Right? That's the thing. You're going to have to walk into my ability or run back into me, and then I have more opportunities to do it. But if you ever do play Kog'Maw, just be wary of your mana. Listen, it happens to everybody who ever plays Kog'Maw EP. There will be a moment when you're chasing somebody like him, and then you're using your mana, and then you don't kill him, and you run out, and you're stuck with only auto attacks. And it's this really awkward where, like, oh, I, I actually can't kill you. So I'm just going to head out, I guess. And you just kind of awkwardly start walking away because you don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really weird experience when you have there's not many mages where you are fully mana and you run out completely that's not a very common thing to happen so it's just really weird <laughs> uh Cassidin, if you didn't know his w gives percent missing mana so actually Cassidin can't even have like a similar feeling as kogma because kogma doesn't give mana back ever Jin's going bot. Sometimes I like just killing the free person, but honestly, this seems more important. I should probably join this fight, and even if my team loses it, I might be able to collapse on them afterwards. Huh? Okay. You're dead. I only have two more shots. Rylice? I ran out of mana. I'm out. But that's what I mean. Did you see how the slow hit her and I almost got that last shot on her? That's the thing that you can do with AP Kog'Maw. I'm not even 16 yet either. I'm so close to 16. And then you'll really see how far range this gets. A lot of people never realize how much range Kogma R has because it's honestly a pretty uncommon champion to be played even in bot lane and also sometimes games just don't last uh, long enough to get level 16 as well but with level 16 they probably might ff soon because that's the point where i'm probably gonna do something that really demoralizes them i'm probably gonna kill the Jin or the senna with only ulties from like 10 miles away <laughs> like i will literally kill them with uh, okay, Wukong's mid, my team's dying. Uh, the reason why I'm staying for this wave is because I'm trying to rush 16 as fast as possible. They might do Baron after they kill my teammates because this is their time to come back in the game. So I need to immediately start rotating towards that. I'm going to buy a blue pot as well because it could be a difficult fight. If they do the Baron, that is. Looks like they're not trying though. So they will take mid tower, but that's okay because we can just wave clear it. Not 16 still, which is frustrating, but... Don't get hit. She's dead. Oh, this guy just flashed on me. I'm not 16 still. I deal so much damage right now. Okay, I got kind of scared of face checking that. I'm worried that they're going to FF before I reach level 16. Please. No. Uh, they just overstepped. The Galio should have never went aggressive there, so that's the reason why that went so well for us. Rylize, she's gonna jump over this wall, so I'll just keep on throwing it at her. I missed, though. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> it's such a fun playstyle. I would highly recommend trying AP Kog'Maw if you like Poke. As you can see, it's super sick. I might be able to kill this person without being 16. I'm bad, I'm bad. I missed everything. I'm so close! I'm so close. Oh my god, I need like a camp. A dragon's coming up. And also I'm out of mana. But if I get one killer assist, I do like get back my mana pool. But I'm just gonna base. I know that we might lose dragon off this, but the good news is that it doesn't matter too much. Um, losing it. And also they they don't have good vision control, so they don't even know that I based, possibly. Let's just do wolves. We're trying to get 16. Okay, we're 16. Now my ultimate range is literally like three screens away. Flash. Make sure we don't die here. Use the blast cone to escape. We need to be on the sidelines chunking people out. Is Wuhan coming for me? Oh my god, I fucking knew it. Oh, thank you for the trap. Got that guy. Nidalee and Jin are still alive, but they have to walk into us. This is warded? Okay. I, My ultimate just came back up, so this is the time to, like, bombard them from 10 miles away. You hit me? Oh, I'm alive, though. High ground, low ground moment there. I might get Jin W'd. <laughs> this is really scary. <laughs> if I get hit by a Jin W, I'm dead. Okay. So much for the demoralizing moment. I can't land an R. Yeah, but look at this range. I can do it from Fog of War. So. I have 500 AP, 25 sec mage eyes. They're building Void Staff, or they're building Magic Resist, so we want to build a Void Staff next. So that's what I'll be going for. Just gonna grab blue real fast. It's kind of a dance with mana, with your living artillery cost. I'll try to kill Senna with only ultimates from really far away. What also matters is the distance between you and the person. This has also happened, and be extremely careful. If you're looking to kill somebody like this, you sometimes run into people because you're so focused on this area with your eyes that you aren't focusing on yourself. And you walk into people and just die. <laughs> because it's hard to keep track of your own character when you're attacking from so far away. Okay, I hit first one. Rylize is proc. Okay, well, the Caitlyn stole my kill. I swear I had her. There's a chance that we get ganked by Wukong from side. Yeah, I'm just dead. I knew that we would get ganked, which is why I backed away, but my teammates were stepping up still, so then, like, I didn't have peel, but I I don't think we would have lived regardless. I knew what was going to happen, and I think my teammates weren't aware, but I don't think they would have saved me anyways. Like, it was just a bad play overall to always step up, because we just saw both of them clear side lanes, and then th we know that we're going to get pinched mid, probably, because that's the best thing that they can do to, like, get, come back into the game. And we don't have us as five. So, I knew it was going to happen, but it seems that it was pretty unpreventable because I backed up immediately, but it was already too late by the time I backed up. The Wukong's already on top of me. I don't have sums, so there's not really much that I can do. The thing that I could have done is literally spam ping my team to back up. That would have been the best play. Oh, okay. Yeah, fuck you, Senna. Specifically, just to, just to kill the Senna only. <laughs> okay, so they don't do Baron that fast, but I might run into Wukong, and that would suck. Nah, I don't think we can chase anybody else. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The long range and the, the phase rush. I could have popped Ghost, possibly, and gotten more. But at least we killed the Wukong. 
I have a Shadow Flame in base, too. So I'm just going to be dealing way more damage to the people that don't have Magic Resist. Uh, I know that I said I was going to build a Void Staff. You know what? I could. You know, let's just go full Void. Uh, let's make it so we also deal damage to Frontline. It's just too important. This is my moment. When you Siege versus Kog'Maw when he's 16, it's actually putting me into a good moment too because I know where you are. I know you're going to step up and I know that I have opportunities to hit you with my ultimate and then we can run you down because you're so far away from your base. You would think that it's, we're in a bad spot because we're being sieged on, but it's actually the opposite. I missed a few. I'm going to wait for it to refresh so we have another opportunity to... Uh, Start the barrage with cold mana again. As you can see, landing it versus people with like big movement speed like Jin uh, is hard. <laughs> it's not easy to do. Landing the first shot is difficult. God, that Senna looks so easy to kill. Uh, I'm stepped on a trap, so they see me, they have vision. Get ahead. You know, this has healed for quite a bit. Okay, I got one R on somebody, did a tiny bit of damage. Uh, believe it or not, because Galio is topside, we honestly can kind of step up. There's not really that much risk. Because he has to. Oh, Wukong using only ultimate on one person here. Oh, Nidalee? Uh, I'm so out of mana, so I, I don't want to use any more. This is the moment where, like, we, we need to stop. We cannot use any more because it's actually going to put us in too much danger. Okay, Pantheon should be able to catch this guy, and then when he dies, we can just do Baron because he just used his clone. So he should just be dead. Oh, what? They're still trying to fight over here? Not them, but like the enemy team? Oh, I got that guy? That guy's dead too? I slowed her. We need to definitely go for Seraphine. Or Senna, sorry. Uh, my uh, presence of mind gives me like a lot of mana back, but it only gives enough for two fully charged ultimates, so... Definitely start it. I'm gonna try to make it so... Sauce Young Link, Adult Link, Sauce Link. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing this cromp. I'm literally full build, so... <laughs> uh, you could sell this for a death cap, I guess. It does give more AP going for a death cap than other than the 25 sec Magi. So that is something that I could do. Anyways, we should definitely siege maybe after Baron. We can maybe even do it beforehand. It really depends on if I can land my ultimate. And now we have bonus movement speed from Air Dragon Soul. So we get 15% mo Oh my god, dude, we are so fast. It's 15% all the time. Um, it's not even like only when you cast your ulti. When I cast my ulti, I will get movement speed, though. So, this is my moment where I just need to chase him down. He's too fast. I tried. It was so close. If I could land one more, it would have been enough. What? It's so frustrating missing Kog'Maw shots. It's okay. I'm just not going to use any more for now because we need to get, uh, get back a little bit of mana. Hmm. 
quite the fight happening on the other side. Oh? The thing is... About you catching me... Is that my kiting is insane. Wait, what? Okay, nice. <laughs> Gosh, okay, so two kills I missed. Okay, the, the Jin, I definitely, I don't think I could catch that guy. But the uh, Senna, I just missed everything. And that is one of the other problems uh, in why things like Kog'Maw aren't played. This is very skill shot oriented. And unlike other champions that are like pseudo uh, skill shot, like, hmm, who's a good example? Like, Kiana's a skill shot champion who has gap closers to make it so you can't miss. But I'm playing from 10 miles away. Um, so it actually is ridiculously hard to sometimes play skill shot versus... And that's why Nidalee also isn't played because her spear is hard to land. Um, sometimes it's not even... Alright, Senna. It's, it's time for you to go because I'm tired of your shit. She might flash over a wall, right? No, maybe not. Okay, we can just end the game now. <laughs> Use Gale Force to run. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, it's 3v5. There feels like there's something in my throat. I'm trying so hard not to cough. Um, it's 3v5, so we shouldn't ever lose. Keep juking back. Eventually, you will be hit, Jin. This guy is really trying to get me just kiting him out. Alright, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. Sorry that I was not able to show off landing only ultimates to kill somebody, but look at the damage here. Wait. Yeah, I know. It deals absolutely nothing. It's crazy. Absolutely insane. Okay, look at the damage here. I wanted to land EQ ult because that's how you kill people, but she keeps on dodging my Q. Oh, there we go. Got her. Uh, anyways, I'm going to end the game now. <laughs> GG. So, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. Hopefully it was educational while also entertaining. If you guys enjoyed the commentary, be sure to give me a like. Leave a comment if you want to help me out with the algorithm. And if you enjoy watching my content a lot and made it this far, feel free to subscribe. You can always subscribe later if you uh, decide to not like my content. Um, doesn't really hurt you. So... Thanks for watching. Again, GG. I don't know who to give it to. That doesn't even look like Pantheon. It's weird. Um, it's like a different champion. So yeah, thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.